Adele phoned me continually the month before, trying to make me get Gerald plead guilty so as to speed things up, so that our names needn't be dragged through the mud any more than they had been. She said she was glad her name wasn't Spencer anymore. My wife didn't know. Honest, honest! Martin. You know. Martin. 
and base, our deputy head. Yes, and our friend. He inquired about you, wanted to know if you were teaching again. Well, I said that you put out a few feelers, some applications, but that no one wanted to employ a 57-year-old man. We chatted, we chatted a bit. And then he suddenly hugged me, and strangely he left saying something I've never really understood. It. It's only recently come back to me. Jenny, I don't think we should go on with this. Can't, can't we just forget it for now, please? He said that I was to make sure that you never taught primary school children ever again, Jenny. Cameras rolling, the dreaded day arrives. Up the court steps. I never knew the courthouse had so many. Suddenly, I, I felt Gerald slip and fall. He'd asked me to hold his hand and I refused. Down he tumbled, step after step, I ran after. I called an ambulance. No one moved. No one. For God's sake, even Chris Langham's wife had her three boys with her. Jimmy, how do you help me? Oh, how I'd like to ring her now. Let's get together for a cosy, warm chat over a bottle of Sauvignon Blanc. Just us girls together. Swapping anecdotes, the, uh, the wives club of men accused of pedophilia. Gerald had had a stroke. I was told that he'd need lots of rest. Be careful looking after. And he was there to pledge me. I was a 60-year-old woman who'd spent practically her whole life Carefully looking after everyone else. <laughs> everyone but me. Jilly, would you hold me? No. I don't think so, Gerald. Then why are you still here? I don't know, Gerald. 